Hey y'all, so today is my very first appointment at the Survivors Clinic at UT Southwestern and I thought I would kind of document this appointment. I haven't been to the doctor in over six months because it was kind of complicated getting an appointment set up, just like changing hospitals and everything. But yeah, I'm almost four years post treatment or post getting diagnosed. So this is another big milestone in my whole like cancer journey because this is the hospital I'll be going to for the rest of my life for my yearly checkups. Um, this is how they'll monitor like long-term side effects, that kind of thing. So it's a big step and I'm really excited and I'm really grateful to be this far out in remission. If you don't know, you aren't considered cured until five years post-treatment. So I have a year until then. The first two years are probably the most like high risk period for like relapse. So I'm already two years out from that. And then the other big milestone will obviously be like I said five years which is when you're considered cured a lot of exciting things happening I can talk more after but we're gonna go to the doctor so let's go okay I never updated since my appointment on Tuesday so I'll kind of recap everything that happened so I got there I registered I had to do some paperwork because it was my first time my doctor was super nice we went over everything she kind of asked about my history yeah it was pretty straightforward she asked me about like some of my concerns if I had any so we kind of talked about that and then I got my lab strong to get poked in both arms. Basically, they tried this arm. Literally, no blood came out of it, so she had to go to the other arm, and it hurt. I thought there was gonna be a bruise, but there's not. They did three vials because they were testing, and they were doing, like, a CBC, which is, like, a full blood panel. They always test my LDH, which is, like, my tumor marker. It's the level that was elevated when I first got sick, so we just always want to make sure that's normal. And then I also got a few hormone tests done, which I want to talk about as well. So, all of my levels came back normal. My parents said, that these results were like the best I've gotten since I've been sick, which is amazing. My LDH was normal. Then I got my hormone levels tested and there was a few different ones. One of them that came back was like, I don't want to say it's like a fertility marker because I'm not really sure the full like explanation thing that it tests. I've kind of known, the doctors have always told me that, you know, chemo could affect my fertility and I didn't have time to do any like egg preservation or like freeze my eggs for treatment because my tumor was just very aggressive that I literally had to start chemo like right away as soon as I was diagnosed. So the doctors have always like make sure that I know that there is a possibility that I could have trouble having kids or my fertile window would be shorter than the average woman. So I got the test result from that last night. It was my AMH level. It was like anti-malarium hormone level and it was on the lower level of normal. My result was a 1.8 and the normal was like maybe 1.5 to like 6 or whatever. I, I'm not really sure. And me wanting to know immediately what that means, I go to Google, I look it up. So there was one that said, you know, that my result was what a 35 year old woman would get. There was another result that said if your AMH is below 2 then that means that you'll like have trouble getting pregnant or if it's above a one like you'll respond well to IVF treatment or and there were other ones that were like it fluctuates throughout the month I don't really know what it means but I did freak myself out and I did end up having like a huge breakdown for a few hours just don't do that don't do what I did so anyway I sent my doctor a message on my chart it could mean that like she wants to do further testing maybe she wants to check that level again you know another time throughout the month when I'm in a different phase of my cycle so it's kind of scary scary and I got so emotional about it last night because I just felt very defeated. I'm at a point in my like, cancer survivorship, like post-cancer life, where I feel very detached from that part of my life. Like obviously I still recognize it. Obviously I don't want to like completely forget about it. I feel very separated from it and I'm very like comfortable with where I'm at. And when I get these like results that to me in my head, even though I don't know like the full explanation behind it yet, to me, every time I get a result that I'm not wanting, it makes me feel very defeated and like cancer is still holding me down and holding me back. It just brings back the same feelings of like that my cancer experience is gonna hold me back for the rest of my life and it is such a like a permanent thing. It just makes it, you can never really like fully separate yourself. I haven't gotten that upset about something related to cancer in a very long time. If you're going through your cancer experience, please like feel free to DM me on Instagram. We can talk through it. Obviously I documented my whole entire cancer journey on my YouTube channel so go and watch my other videos literally i have videos from when i was diagnosed like hair growth 
hairstyle videos, everything that you can think of. Yeah, I will update y'all once I know more about those results that I got. I just wanted to be open about it because like fertility is a very sensitive and personal topic, but I know a lot of other, like that's such a big factor into going through chemo that it's worth like talking about and opening up about because I know so many other women that are cancer survivors. Okay, I just wanted to give an update what I talked about the other day. So I got a message back from my doctor. She did say that my levels were in the low range of normal. She said I did have a high dose of cyclophosphamide, which is one of the chemos I received. And I guess that's the one that affects your fertility. And she said you'd have a high dose of cyclophosphamide, which puts you at high risk for fertility issues. She just suggested I have like a consultation with fertility doctor slash specialist. I hope these videos are still helping other people out there, young adults, other young adult women that are going through cancer treatment, that have gone through cancer treatment. I'm just going to try to focus on the positive that I still am healthy and that every single one of my other lab results came back the best they've ever looked since I um, got sick. So yeah, thanks for following along this cancer journey, cancer survivorship journey. Four years later, we're still dealing with stuff. I will talk to you later. Bye.